Hey audio fans, Jim Slick, President and CEO of Slick Audio, coming at you to talk about RAID, and I don't mean about bug spray RAID, I'm talking about RAID for computers, redundant array of inexpensive disks. Oof. It's an acronym. Welcome to IT, Information Technology. That's an acronym. Holy hell. Sorry. Kids, I didn't say the word hell. You didn't hear it. I just said it again. Terrible. I digress. Let's talk about RAID, shall we? Uh, RAID is a way of taking multiple hard drives and combining them together uh, to help prevent data loss. We did talk about backups before. Did you get your backup drives like we talked about before? I hope you did. If you didn't, I'm going to come after you. I'm telling you. Anyway, so three ways to implement RAID. There's software RAID, meaning the operating system can handle and basically do the raid for you. Bad. Terribly slow. Processor hog. It's just bad all the way. So don't even think about doing that. Ever. Ever. Uh, then there's raid on a motherboard. A lot of consumer based or consumer grade motherboards now have raid hardware raid functionalities built into it. Um, as it's a great idea and it's better than software raid, it's definitely not an ideal situation. It, it consumes a lot of uh, DMA and, and uh, uh, processing power, if you will, just to keep this uh, the discussion a little bit lighter and less technical. Um, then there's the third way, which is what we use in our Slick Audio 2000 or 4000 series boxes, uh, that is on a separate hardware card, and it is a hardware-based RAID. Uh, but it's a dedicated hardware-based RAID on a card. We use LSI controllers. Uh, it's my preference from being in the IT world for 30-plus years. Uh, I'm not going to even give you the exact number. It's just over 30, I'll tell you that. So, anyways, um, you know these boxes are like servers and, and, uh, and a data center. Uh, really not a lot different than that. Um, you know, they're, they need to push data in and out as fast as possible. And audio, we need to do the same. We make sure that we can capture our data and of course we want to be able to keep it so um, now that you know that, that how we do our uh, RAID and is the best way to do RAID period uh, let's talk about RAID levels now there's RAID 0 RAID 0 is striping something you never want to do uh, ever 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 so what that is is two hard drives say one terabyte and one terabyte and you stripe them together it's called RAID 0 hey so now I have two, two, two terabytes of total disk space well that's great because you have lots of disk space but all of a sudden one hard drive dies one day because that's what they do with their electromechanical devices they puke it is what it is lose one drive you lost the whole thing you lost every bit of data you lost your operating system you lost it all not a good idea so move on to RAID 1 RAID 1 is also known as mirroring mirroring is where we take two hard drives one terabyte, one terabyte, and we don't we put them together, but we're they're actually mirroring one another, so they each contain the same data. So even though you've got two ter terabytes of total disk, you really only have one usable because this drive and this drive are recording the exact same thing at nearly the exact same time, and then voila, one drive pukes. Guess what? I'm still up and running. So, great idea for an operating system. You can definitely use it for data as well, uh, for your audio. There is one little caveat to running mirror drives, and that is, if you think about it, if I'm writing to two hard drives, it takes twice as long to write two hard drives as it does to just one. So, ah, uh, enter the Dragon. Enter the hardware base controller that offloads that processing and that extra horsepower for you. So doing RAID on a card like that is an okay thing. Unlike doing it in a regular box or software, it's bad. So I've already said that. Now there's another RAID level uh, that we're going to talk about today. There's actually a lot of RAID levels, but uh, next one is RAID level 5. RAID level 5, you need at least three hard drives. So let's just say we had a hard drive, a hard drive, and I don't have another hand, but I'll pretend this is another hard drive. How does that sound? So one terabyte, one terabyte, one terabyte. So what you're doing is you're actually putting data across the three drives, and then there's what's called parity striping that happens uh, in between there. So it's a way of basically having a check 
back and forth. So if one of those drives fails, the other two can figure out what was on that third drive and can put it together. So that's parody bits do that. Neat stuff. But anyways, I don't want to keep this technical. This is for you audio folks. Us audio folks. So it is very fast in its write speeds and it is also very fast in its, in its read speeds. So it's a very, very, very good way of, rec of storing your data. So what I usually do, if somebody recommends to me, you know, Jim, if you had the best, you know, spend all the money in the world, you know, hmm, well, I could think of a lot of things. Another Corvette would be good. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, digressing here. Um, more guitars? Hmm. Hey, how about a new DAW? That sounds like a great idea. And we're going to put, we're going to mirror the first two hard drives for the operating system because it's very critical that we keep that intact. And then I'm going to put a RAID 5 set in for my data. Uh, and the reason why I do that is for the speed. So now I get an operating system. Uh, you're not writing to the operating system. You're reading for the, the operating system. So in RAID 1, it reads twice as fast because I've got tw it, two hard drives doing the same thing, basically. And then in I have RAID 5 sitting on the data side where I'm capturing my recordings. So, quite honest guys, if you're just doing, you know, if you're by yourself in the studio, you're doing a handful of tracks, 30, 40, 50, 60 tracks, uh, RAID 1 and RAID 1, ideal, that's fine. Um, I've run that for a long, long time. Um, if you start getting into above 60 tracks, uh, I would say RAID, run RAID 1, RAID 5. Uh, that's in a perfect world, of course, uh, if you can afford to do that. Um, and if you start looking at it, you know, based on, on the amount of time that you're putting into these tracks, you get the perfect take, perfect guitar track, perfect vocal track, you know, or, or, or you're tracking for somebody else and you just get that moment and you capture it. The last thing that's God's earth that you want to do is, is miss it because you blew a hard drive in the middle of a session. With our boxes, you don't do that. Good stuff. Um, and we can actually do it with SSDs as well. So uh, not, only, not only can we take advantage of regular platters, uh, we can also take advantage of SSDs and putting them in RAID as well. And my God, that gets real fast. So the whole idea is to give you some protection and some safety. Uh, it's a safety net. Don't want to lose data. Um, and it's also, of course, uh, you know, giving you the first stage in your <clears throat> backup. Did I say backup? Did you have your backup drive yet? You still haven't gotten it? Ugh! Get your drive. Doggone it. Did I say backup enough times? I'm going to say it about 50 million more by the time these video sessions are done. Anyways, hopefully you understand a little bit about RAID. There are different RAID levels. There's RAID 50, there's all RAID 10, there's all kinds of wild stuff out there. We don't need to do that in audio, guys. We're here to make music. So, you know, the ones you need to be concerned with, RAID 1, RAID 5. Uh, that is it. It's sufficient for what we do. Um, I've done, I literally have some things on here that are well over 100 tracks. Um, geez, I, I've got one, uh, one of the last songs I did, I think has uh, 2, 3, 9, 10, about 12 or 13 virtual instruments running. Um, Spectrosonics, Omnisphere, I'm actually running two or three sessions of that. Superior Drummer 2. Um, Oh my goodness, I, I could go on and on about that stuff. I love that stuff, neat stuff. Uh, and uh, plugins, probably close to 200 plugins on, on that. And uh, this thing doesn't even blink an eye. I'm not even running 20% utilization on it. Um, and, uh, you know, that's at 130 some odd tracks. So, uh, it, you know, they're brutal. If you design them right, these boxes can do darn near anything that you want to do. And again, the whole idea is, is we want them to record music so we can play it back and have an audience and make money and do what we do for a living. Uh, so if you want the best, come visit us. Be good. Cheers.